Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, Baptism of Our Lord Feast um, today. And we're going to start with our first hymn on Jordan's Bank. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks. 
be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. 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 The introduction for the first reading, Genesis 1, 1, 5. Today we commemorate the baptism of our Lord. In our first reading, God sends forth his light into the world to banish darkness, just as through baptism, the light of the Holy Spirit comes into our lives and drives away the darkness of sin. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe, Ascribe to, to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice, the voice of, of the Lord, Lord is a is powerful, powerful voice. voice. The, voice the voice of the Lord, Lord, Lord is a voice, voice of splendor. splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes, he makes Lebanon like, like a calf, calf and, and Mount Hermon like a young, a young wild ox. ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The, the voice of the Lord, Lord makes the oak trees, trees writhe and, and strips the forest bare. bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord, the Lord sits enthroned, sits enthroned above, above the flood. The Lord, the Lord sits, sits enthroned as a king, king forevermore. More. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Introduction to the second reading. In today's New Testament reading, St. Paul finds some people in Ephesus who had been disciples of John the Baptist but had not heard of the Holy Spirit. He explains the difference between John's baptism and the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they accept a new baptism in his, at his hands. A reading from the book of Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not ever, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the, with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, all there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. So today we're going to have a special sermon. Um, not by me. Uh, I know that this week, after the events of this week in the Capitol, I really don't know what to say, honestly, about that. Um, fortunately, uh, our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, has given us a beautiful sermon about love and how we can love each other and get through this all together. So we're going to watch our presiding bishop, Michael Curry's message today instead of hearing from me. And now in the name of our loving, liberating and life-giving God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, amen. In another time of national crisis, another time of danger for our nation, in 1865, on March the 4th, Abraham concluded his second inaugural address with these words, with malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right. Let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Lincoln knew in that moment, in the moment of a national crisis, a moment of great danger, that such a moment was a moment of decision when a nation, when a people must decide, who shall we be? What kind of nation, what kind of people shall we be? A hundred years later, Martin Luther King faced the same reality. Who shall we be? The civil rights movement was waning. The great victories that had been won had been won, and yet now questions of poverty and economic despair and disparities raised an awesome specter on the nation. We were at war. We were at war in another country, but there was war on our streets. The nation was deeply divided. Cities burned. There were riots, riots at national conventions of political parties. The future of the nation was in question. And it was at that time that Dr. King realized that in moments of danger, a decision must be made. And he titled his last book, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos, or community. 
I believe as he believed, as Abraham Lincoln believed, as I believe you believe, that we must choose community. Chaos is not an option. Community is our only hope. The truth is, Dr. King spoke often of all that he did and labored for was for the purpose of realizing as much of the beloved community of God as is possible on this earth. He spoke of beloved community. The Bible, the New Testament, Jesus spoke of the kingdom or the reign of God. Jesus taught us to pray and to work and to labor for that beloved community, that reign of God's love in our time and in our world. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, just as it is in heaven. Those are our marching orders from Jesus himself. I am a follower of Jesus of Nazareth. Because I believe that his way of love, and his way of life, is the way of life for us all. I believe that unselfish, sacrificial love, love that seeks the good and the welfare and the well-being of others as well as the self, that this is the way that can lead us and guide us to do what is just, to do what is right, to do what is merciful. It is the way that can lead us beyond the chaos to community. Now I know, I, I know full well that this may to some sound naive, to others idealistic. And I understand that. And yet, I want to submit that the way of love that leads to beloved community is the only way of hope for humanity. Consider the alternative. The alternative is chaos, not community. The alternative is the abyss of anarchy, of chaos, of hatred, of bigotry, of violence. And that alternative is unthinkable. We have seen nightmarish visions of that alternative. We saw it in Charlottesville just a few years ago when neo-Nazis marched through the streets of an American city chanting, Jews will not replace us. That alternative is unthinkable. We saw it in Minneapolis, St. Paul, where a public safety officer knelt with his knee on the neck of another human being, a child of God, just like he was, and snuffed out the breath of life that God gave him. The alternative is unthinkable. And we have seen it this past Wednesday when a monument to democracy, the capital of the United States of America was desecrated and violated with violence by vandals. Lives were lost. A nation was wounded. Democracy itself was threatened. My brothers and sisters, this way of love that Jesus taught us when he said, love the Lord your God and your neighbor as yourself. This way of love that Moses taught even before Jesus. This way of unselfish, sacrificial love. It is the way to redeem a nation, to save a world. It is the way of hope for us all. But, but do not make the mistake of thinking that I speak of a 
sentimental and emotional love. Jesus spoke of love most consistently. The closer he got to the cross. This way of love is the way of sacrifice. The way of unselfishness. The way of selflessness. That seeks the good of the other. As well as the self. And that is the way of the cross which is the way of life. And if you don't believe me, ask another apostle of love. Not Dr. King, not Abraham Lincoln. Ask Archbishop Tutu. Ask one who gave his, has given his life for the cause of God's love in the way of Jesus. Ask him. Ask Nelson Mandela in your mind. Ask them what love looks like. They knew that the way of love could was the only way that could guide South Africa from what could have become a bloody nightmare in civil war to the way that could build a nation. And it was not sentimental. Remember truth and reconciliation. They had to face painful truths. They had to do what was just and what was merciful. They had to do what the prophet Micah said. But the motivation and the guide was love. Archbishop Tutu said this, love, forgiving, and being reconciled to our enemies or our loved ones is not about pretending that things are other than they are. It is not about patting one another on the back or turning a blind eye to the wrong. True reconciliation exposes the awfulness of the abuse, the hurt, the truth. It could even sometimes make things worse for a while. It is a risky undertaking, but in the end, it is worthwhile. Because in the end, only an honest confrontation with reality can bring forth real healing. Superficial reconciliation only bring superficial healing. This is the way of love that can heal our hurts, that can heal our land, that can help us to become one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. So I would ask you to do two things. I'm asking you to make a commitment, a renewed commitment to live the way of love as Jesus has taught us and to do it by making a commitment to go out and bless somebody. Bless somebody you disagree with. Bless somebody you agree with but to go out and, and bless somebody by helping somebody along the way. Go out and bless somebody by listening to their story and their life. To go out and be an instrument of God's peace, an agent of God's love. And then I would ask you to pray. Pray for this nation, but pray with some specificity. Pray that we may have the wisdom and the courage to love. God of grace and God of glory, on thy people pour thy power. Crown thine ancient church's story 
bring her bud to glorious flower. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of this hour. With malice toward none, with charity toward all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right. Let us strive to finish the work, the work that we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan, to, all, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. God love you. God bless you. And may God hold us all in those almighty hands of love. Amen. Amen. We're truly blessed to have such a wonderful presiding bishop as Bishop Curry. I know he can't hear me, but thank you. Please join me now in our profession of faith in the Nicene Creed, which begins on page four. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. We remember the tragedy of the week, we pray. O oh God, holy and just, you exalt a nation that follows the way of righteousness. We pray for our land and people that we may become worthy of your gracious favor. Deliver us from greed of gain, from race and class prejudice and ill will, from all causes of discontent and strife. Inspire in us such love of our neighbor and concern for one another's welfare that we shall work together with one heart and will to, ensure, to secure equality of opportunity and due reward for all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Grant almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amen. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace. We may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Today we pray especially for Hank, Peter, Bob, Joe, 
Nina, Shirley, Mark, Rinaldo, Charles, Carolina, Pam, MB, Marion, Clay, Kai, Frank, Mark, Michael, Kimberly, Tina, Carol, Sue D, Ilsa, Todd, Debbie, Carol, Farrell, Michael and Bernadette G, Ivy, Doug and Natalie, Joan and the victims of the Nashville bombing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died. May they rest in peace, especially Betty Kelly Anderson and those who perished at the Capitol, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We also pray for the frontline workers, Dr. Elizabeth Engelman, Dr. Dan Griffin, Dr. Jeff Kurowski, Dr. Rachel Simpson, Karen Liu, Eva Longmire, Brenda Marshall, Susan Dietz Massengill, Kat Bates, and the workers at Longview Medical Research Center, Marina Guerra, the first responder to the Nashville bombing, and those responding to natural disasters, and those responding to the Capitol. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. What we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. <laughs> and the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Peace. 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 Um, okay, so uh, we have lots of announcements to do. Um, stay tuned after church. If you don't normally stay for coffee hour, don't hang up because at the end, we're going to have a video that I made of the journey of the wise man <laughs> to the crush, featuring the, the beautiful St. Stephen's Choir. So hang on and we can watch that video. It's also on YouTube and Facebook and, you know, you might have already seen it, but we're going to play it for you all too. And then we'll have coffee hour after that. Um, our 2021 offering envelopes are on the way. It turns out that it was the error of the company, not us. So yay, I guess. <laughs> Bernadette called them and they're like, oh yeah, they're sitting over there. We never sent them. Like, oh, okay. So we'll be getting them soon and then we'll figure out a way to get them to you, which is a whole other problem. <laughs> uh, anyway, and our in-person services are suspended for a time because a teacher at Frankie's school tested positive for COVID-19 last week. So we're currently on quarantine um, until at least January 16th, uh, possibly longer. So I'll keep you posted and about that. So I'll be working from home mostly um, unless I'm here, you know, when no one else is around locked in my office alone. <laughs> but uh, so you can follow the rectory or email, whatever, I'll be there. Um, yeah, so it's no fun. Uh, so far, we haven't had any symptoms or anything uh, on our end. And we're all going to get tested this week. Uh, so hopefully it'll all be fine. I, the school has very been very good at following all the protocols. So hopefully it didn't spread 
And this is their first case since they reopened in September. So that's good. Anyway, what are you gonna do? What else? I don't know. The book study continues this week. And any birthdays or anniversaries? Today is my husband's birthday. I can guarantee you he is not on this phone call. <laughs> it was Cal, they are, they are watching Elsie cars. Elsie's birthday on the 5th. Whose birthday? Elsie's. Elsie's birthday. Yay. I imagine she's not on this call. <laughs> um, that's cool. So we can pray for Elsie. And Frank too, why not? He's okay. He's gonna be 42, the meaning of life. He's probably mad that I told you he's 42, but he is. <laughs> um, okay, so for Elsie and Frank, let's do our birthday prayer. Watch over those who are celebrating their birthdays, O Lord, as their days increase, bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them where they stand, comfort when they are discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may peace which passes understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, and I want to say thanks to the Altar Guild and all the volunteers who came yesterday to undecorate. It's kind of sad. I miss all the uh, poinsettias and stuff but I'm sorry I couldn't come and help you but I'm thank you so much for putting all that stuff away and and distributing the plants um I hope everybody who wanted one got one we'll see uh anything else to announce all right okay good so don't forget to stay on the line to watch the video of the wise men traveling. It's fun, it's cute. If I do this on myself, <laughs> I'm biased because I made it. Anyway, we'll continue on with our offertory. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and sacrifice to God. Oh,
and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give, give him thanks and praise. praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have created a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. When he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, O gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever blessed Virgin Mary, John the Baptist, Saint Stephen and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will, will be done, on earth, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread. And, and give us our, our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, power and, power and, power and glory, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let, let us, us keep, keep the feast. Hallelujah.
people of God, remember that Christ died for us and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year.